Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest Garage Lore stream. Me, Tim, Vikings, Valheim. Now, let's bring it on over. Meow. Yeah. Hey, we back in here. Tim? Vikings? <laughs> My full name, Tim Vikings. <laughs> me, Tim Vikings. <laughs> it's me, Tim Vikings. Uh, yeah, this is probably just gonna, folks, we're probably just gonna have a more chill stream today because, uh, what is it, we set up the portal last time, and now we just have to, like, not be under-leveled for that area, and that probably entails yeah. getting iron armor, and, of course, we're running, we're running low on meat, so I'm probably just gonna farm some boar, or I'm going to deal with some boars, and, deal uh, with deal with that quote-unquote. So this is probably just going to be a more chill Valheim stream. This is the real Cozy Boy Hours. Unlike the fake Cozy Boy Hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, un unpacking boxes, building bridges, just super stressful stuff. Being a Viking, being attacked by sea monsters, that's the true Cozy Boy Hours. So I'm going to try to get us started on a farm. I'm gonna get some gonna meat going. Some hunting. I'm gonna try to find you're some gonna do meat the, here. You're gonna do the hunting. I'm gonna do the farming. You need someone uh -huh. to do the gathering. <laughs> uh, I need some bronze and core wood. I don't remember if we had core wood. Oh boy, I had I had core wood. Perhaps I know where to the... get it. It's, just... it's per it's it's perhaps in the uh, sh the shack the off to the side. We have yeah. core wood somewhere. I'm it's, I'm blanking on where I put it. I'll just grab all my tools because I don't foresee us going out. At least not this yeah. evening. I think uh, tools. That's something we do, or that's something we take off when we're setting off to sea, and yeah. there's no promises. Safety not guaranteed. You remember that meme? It's an OG meme right there. Yeah. There was a movie with that name. Was there actually a movie based on that meme? Yeah. Actually, now that, I, now that we're talking about it, I feel like I remember this becoming a movie. It was like a time travel movie. With yeah. Aubrey Plaza, I think. She was in yeah. that? I think so. Did you? Well, you're already pretty far away. Never mind. I was gonna say, do what you, you need? Do some resting now that it's dark. I'm I'm lighting these torches that <laughs> we've long since forgotten about. All the way up someone... to the OG home. Someone's attacking something. Actually, I'm about to I'm about to be at the OG house. Do you want to rest over there, and I'll rest over here? Why not? Let's do that. Oh no, the fire is out here. That's right, it probably won't let me. Why can't I repair this? Oh, crafting station. Oh, there we go. That would probably be a good idea. Okay, I re I re I relit the fire over here so I can sleep. Alright, I'll uh hop into bed. Wait, I thought this was just lit. It's lit AF. That's what, that's what they say. That's what the Vikings used to say. Yep. Oh, right. I had a different bed set. Oh, yeah. Dream. Did you ever... I can't remember if there was a home set by that new portal. Yeah, I set that up. Oh, I never tagged the, the portal, but that's fine. We only have the two portals anyway. Or, no, two locations portaled up. Let's get some foods.
So I'm going to start, yeah. while I'm here, mm -hmm. I might as well start getting some iron going. Yep. Yeah. The one time I want to find boars, there are no boars. <laughs> when I'm just trying to mind my own business, all the boars come my way. Yeah, it's when you're running around. What was the process for making copper? Or not copper, bronze. You have to. You just use it as a wrench, right? Combine the copper and the iron. Um, copper and the tin ingots, I think. That sounds right. It's been a while, though. It's been a while yeah. since we were at yeah. that point. It's two to one. And it gives me. Okay, that only gives me one. What do I need for this tool? Five, okay. I may need to start hunting for some tin. Where did we find that? Uh, Black Forest. Oh boy. What you up to at the moment? I think I need to get some tin. All right. I gotta find a good place. I could. Okay, we still had some. At least I didn't have. I had some that was not marked off. Just out west. While we're just kind of chilling at the moment, we can continue to talk about our favorite things from the last year. Jimmy, you want to tell me about your thoughts on everything, everywhere, all at once? I think we actually discussed this on a podcast episode back when we were podcasters. <laughs> but I, that was a 2022 movie, right? Yeah, came out last. Yeah, it, it must have been. Year. It must have been early in the early in the year then, right? Yeah. I don't I think it originally released in 2022 and not like to theaters 2021 and then digital physical later. I think it was all in 2022. It's been a, I remember enjoying the movie. I'm struggling to remember what the themes were of the it's like multiverses, right? Yeah. Oh, right, that movie came out too. Which one? The multiverses movie that Doctor Strange one. Oh, I didn't even put that. I don't think I put that on my list, but yeah, I actually. That's, I actually like that one, but uh, everything everywhere at once. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I like uh, Michelle Yeoh. I I remember her from I forget the name of which Jackie Chan movie she was in that I first saw her, but then I enjoyed her in Tomorrow Never Dies. And she was really great in this one. Just, I I like the 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 way it 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 deals with the tones of like if nothing matters, then every you you get to choose what matters in life. You know, what I mean, like she, there was that one scene where she saw every universe in the world and she realized, you know, nothing matters, right? But then that's the beauty of that, right? That if nothing matters. You can choose what I, I remember discussing this in a podcast episode. What was what was the term that I read online that people were using? Um, it was absurdism versus uh 
because her daughter was the one that took the stance that like right. nothing we nothing we do is important in this universe just nihilism or something right. i don't know i think I, that that might be it but also the 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 father character in that movie was also really cool because he had like within the drop of a dime he had to switch between like a, a really confident version of himself to yeah, a really like right. yeah. <laughs> weak version of himself it was like he he had to switch playing two different characters simultaneously mm -hmm. i don't did, did i stream stream this in discord where they had the behind the scenes of some uh, how some of the scenes they shot were like uh, like done not green screen but they had to cheat some of the scenes where like the, the actors weren't really there with one another like someone is mm -hmm. is grabbing them from the car and then it's like not actually the actor's arm that you would think um that wouldn't surprise me because like that does happen in movies mm -hmm. like i th i think there was it's definitely something that's come up in like marvel movies or where they have like a lot of big name actors who have busier schedules or whatever so like sometimes they mm -hmm. can't get everyone in a in a scene simultaneously for whatever reason for like a particular shoot or whatever so it does happen it took me this long to find a boar but i, I did one. it but yeah yeah i i vaguely remember us when whenever we've had to go out hunting for boars it's like how do we how come we can't find them you know what else was a fun movie tim the unbearable weight of massive talent yeah, those came out... I think we discussed like, both these yeah. movies on the same podcast episode. Yeah, they came out, like, right around the same time, because they were both, like, in the spring or something like that. Um, I was surprised by both these movies being as good as they were. Because I remember, I think I saw the trailer for both of them, and I'm like, oh, those look like, good, look like fun movies. Didn't expect them to be both actually pretty good. You know, I, th I saw Nicolas Cage do... Uh ask me anything on reddit and uh -huh. like i don't think he likes the unbearable weight of massive talent as much as we as fans like the unbearable weight of massive talent i think he was saying something like uh you know he like uh you know it was fun but also that's not the real me right <laughs> Just, yeah so you guys all know i'm not He's actually like, like that oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i that was very obvious like he's playing a big like a character for himself because people, mm -hmm. do, I mean, anytime you see a, a an actor trying to pl play a, a character of themselves or whatever in a movie, it's rarely like their real self and stuff and like some exaggerated version or something. What was the name of that actor who was the fanboy? Because he's, he's Pedro, isn't he? Pedro Pascal. Yeah, and he's in The Last of Us right now, right? Yeah. He's, yeah. Been, he's been getting a lot of work lately, which is good. Yeah, he's a good actor. He's like, yeah, he was great. He was great in, that. He was yeah, great he was... in the unbearable with a massive talent. <laughs> yeah, he was very much the uh, Nicolas Cage fanboy, and he kind of did it perfectly. While Jeffrey did came Pig... across a troll. Oh, did you come across a troll? Do you need assistance? Uh, should be fine. I can always just get away from it. Shoot him, Tim! Oh wow, you're a ways out from me. I don't know if I if you're if you're choosing to fight this guy, I don't know if I can get to you in time. Yeah, it's fine if I if I die, it's fine. This is not like it's hard to get back here. I th yeah, I think I think that was a good, that was a fun movie because it you get to see um, Nicolas Cage kind of hamming it up as he usually does, but also like still playing a more normal person, which he doesn't do often. It seems. Was this the year that Pig came out? Also, because I I thought Pig was that was. 
Might have been the year before, or two years before that. It was Pig was definitely much more recent. Okay. Than some of his other stuff, but wasn't there wasn't that the movie that um. Might have been Pig, like where he it was his first film after basically being out of debt or whatever. I don't know about that. He's like, I can now actually pick and choose what I want to be in, instead of just because I because he was kind of been he kind of had a run of just a bunch of movies that were just like why why would anyone do these movies but other he still does not Yep, got to get and, that Hollywood paycheck somehow if yeah. you're in debt, right? But I the don't great hold thing it against is them. like, but the great thing is he still plays the roles well, even. Right. I think that's why a lot of people like him. He even does he what he like, can with yeah. the ish that he's given. Yeah, like that. Um, was it Willie's Wonderworld or whatever it was? That was a great movie. Yeah. I ended up really liking that one. Where he just played a silent pr like protagonist or whatever. <laughs> Is that troll still following you? Yeah. I'm coming, Tim. This is going to be like a WWE run-in. It's going to be really great when I come to save you. Jeff comes in, gets one shot off. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm the hero. No. Did that guy get shot instead? Is that a get down Mr. President situation? <laughs> All right, I'll leave him. I'll leave him at a, a one shot left for you. How can you tell? Does it show his health bar? Yeah. Oh, you're. Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm still a ways out. If you just want to finish him off, I won't hold that yeah. against you. That's right. We had a. We built our own little houses around you because I, I see them on the map. We have a bunch of uh, summer residences scattered yeah. around the map. Be funny if these guys even like just ran off once they saw me kill the troll. <laughs> it's like in a Yakuza game where you <laughs> they get scared eventually. Yeah. It was Arkham did that did that also, right? That could be. Yeah, I think the unbearable weight of massive talent did a great job of like being both a comedy and an action movie. What like with each character playing both roles well, or both sides of it. Uh -huh. And it did, and it didn't feel like. Um, there's a. I feel like there's not a lot of just pure comedies anymore. It's usually comedy, like comedy action, comedy drama, or something. It's rarely just a comedy. No, I'm not going to kill Steel Zero. I'm already too far out. I'm yeah, still on my way over enough. there. Oh, I need to drop off some stuff. What is the Northman? Because I saw that on the list. That was... Um, I don't know the director's name, but he's he's done like a variety of like... art house -y sort of movies. But this one was like specifically following a guy in, you know, ancient, like in like Viking times or whatever. Ghost, it's basically like his whole life, more or less his whole life. Uh, it's just a big revenge plot sort of thing. But it's um, a good, like, slow burn sort of thing. And it, ha and it definitely has a lot of like horror elements and. Um, like psychological horror and whatnot, as well as a lot of actual Viking war violence and stuff like that too. It says like a lot of stuff, a lot of different genre of stuff in there. All right. I think but I missed the first. It's still game. like, it's a. I think there was something. I remember reading something about it 
after the fact that it somehow ended up being like the most accurate or authentic like period piece movie of like set in that setting even though that's not what they were going for it just happened to be that it just turned out that way like because their attention to detail or whatever i don't know out, Tim. Get down, Mr. President. Oh, no. Don't worry, I got him. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I missed the first half of Bullet Train when you started streaming it, but I enjoyed the second half of Bullet Train. Yeah. Speaking of action comedies, yeah. The, those are the kinds that I, that I like where it's just... It's one of those sort of movies that just takes place in one like location for the most part and it it also felt like um it sort of felt like a comedy version of john wick in a way yeah because like, they had because they had a lot of that like world building and lore and stuff to everyone it wasn't just like there was a lot more depth there than needed to be but i thought it was a fun movie I think that's on Netflix now. Was Brad Pitt's character meant to be like an assassin or was he just a dude caught up in all that? Yeah, yeah, he was. Okay. But he was like, I think he came in on his day off or whatever. It was something like that. Fill it in for a uh -huh. guy. It was that sort of thing. It was like, it's my day off. I'm not even supposed to be here And so, like, other today. people were going after him, thinking he was someone else. Thinking he was the guy that he, he uh, replaced or whatever. So, there's a lot of, um, what's that anime trope? Oh, Jeffrey attacked. <laughs> Always when I click away from the window, someone decides yeah. to swing on by. The anime trope? What? Which? Which one? The whole miscommunication thing. Oh, uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, it's just all a misunderstanding, like that whole thing. Because that's base. He was okay. He was Mr. McGooing his way through every situation, basically. <laughs> so it was like a John Wick who just Mr. McGooed his way through things. Everything was accidental for the most part. And at least for a Brad Brad Pitt's character. Even though he's still like an actual assassin in the in that movie's universe or whatever. I missed Glass Onion. I'm not devastated if you want to discuss spoilers, but how did you like Glass Onion? Because I've heard mixed things about it on, of course, the source of truth, the, the good people on Twitter. What are your thoughts on Glass Onion? Um, I enjoyed it. It definitely was a little too on the nose for some of the stuff they're doing. Um, but it was how also so? like... How so? Um... I think just like some of the character portrayals in it were just very much just like very tropey characters in that okay. set, in that whatever that setting. Um, but either like that, all that stuff aside, it was still like I still enjoyed it. I don't, I didn't like it as much as Knives Out, which I think played it a little more straight for some of that stuff. But it's still like a, a movie worth checking out either way. Because it's it still does like some fun stuff in the the Who Done It like murder mystery thing. Speaking of Who Done It's, we uh, I think that was the last of the movies you listed. But in terms of mysteries and murder, let's talk about the after party, which is like a weird Apple TV right, thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually we're gonna have... discuss. We're I this is again late, but spoilers on everything we're about to discuss. But after party. What a twist. Well, some would say they saw... The good people sure, on Reddit yeah, will yeah. say that they saw it coming a mile away, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't... I think we... This was something that we mentioned when we were talking about it. 
Um, I don't care about the actual like twists and stuff necessarily of like, oh, this was a good twist, this was a bad twist, or whatever. But I just I'm there for the the ride basically, uh -huh. as long as it's interesting enough. And that one, I, that one, I th actually, you know, to me, the twist of that was not the whole murder mystery thing of it, but like the constant changing of genres between each person's point of view. Right. Like, that I was didn't the fun expect part. that going into it, going into that one show. One was a musical, one was an animated cartoon, right? One was yeah. kind of like a horror type of deal. Yeah. One was like an action movie. That, that show had a lot of actors that like aren't super popular but you see them yeah. on screen you're like oh yeah this person i know this yeah. i've seen this person plenty yeah, of times exactly it was all like the supporting actors like that it was a cast of that and everyone was pretty good in that mm -hmm. did you know who it was tim did you did you piece together who it was no, I, didn't, I didn't even try to figure that out because i'm like i don't care i'll just watch <laughs> it i'll just wait until it's revealed i forgot the character's name but we we refer to him lovingly as Sonic the Hedgehog, right? But uh, the, sure. the Reddit community was pretty pretty on him for that entire run. Sure. Wait, what is? Oh, did I have? Oh, right, right. There's still some iron in here. That's why I was doing that. You were watching Peacemaker. Yeah, I had that. I don't remember why I did it, but I'm just like, I'll give this a shot. And um, I actually oh, really it? liked it. All right. It was way better than it had any right to be. I think that's probably like one of the best DC Universe things, to be honest. Like, as much as, like, the, what was it, the Suicide Squad movie they did recently? I enjoyed that, but this one was better, I think. Oh, ooh. And... I think John Cena just, he just does a better job of being a movie or being an actor than like The Rock. Cause he's- You think so? He can, he can, he's good at making fun of himself. Yeah. Know? John Cena, he might not understand he's a meme, but he knows to lean into it. <laughs> yeah. Where like everything I've heard about The Rock is he always wants to be like, he wants to be taken seriously all the time it seems like right he, he's what, trying to like keep a really goals. squeaky clean image you know yeah which is like weird considering like his wrestling personas in the past or whatever i don't know yeah you look up an old rock promo he says some problematic things <laughs> and then there's like dave batista who's just like he just has much more range than both batista it's funny because, like, I think we had a discussion at one point, like, could could The Rock have been Drax? And it's like, no. Because Batista, no. he knows how to be a doofus. He knows how to play the meathead doofus, right? Yeah. Whereas I feel like The Rock wouldn't necessarily do that. He'd yeah. do it, but not in the Dave Batista type of way. Yeah. Which works better for a Drax. Like, what was that one... Like, when I think about The Rock being a goofy character, I think about that one movie where he was with Kevin Hart, and Kevin Hart was, like, yeah. the super spy. And yeah. it's like, okay, I used to be a nerd. And it's like, okay, he's playing this character, but and I buy it, but not really. You know? <laughs> it's like, yeah. what was The Rock a nerd? Never, you know? Speaking of shows we watched, him, can you give me a, a review on life experiences? With uh, Forrest McNeil, oh, that man. we that that's didn't an come older out. Show. That's uh, an older show, but we just recently got into it. Yeah, I, that one came out in I don't know twenty. It was sometime within the past ten years, I think. And it was just like some small show on H or on HBO uh, Comedy Central. I'm trying to find that show in the past because i remember hearing about it and trying to watch it online anywhere and it's just like a struggle to find he's another one of those actors where it's like 
he's not at the S tier of oh, Hollywood. Yeah. But yeah, like, he's definitely one of those character actors, comedic actors that you just see. Like it's, if um, you see his face, Andy you're like, all Daly. right, this guy. I've seen this guy like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's a guy. I he's he does a lot of like. Um, there's a podcast called uh, Comedy Bang Bang, and they mm-hmm. they had a TV series at one point, which I think I've showed you a few episodes of it, um, which was like doing a parody version of a TV talk show. Damn, like our the, beehives have been destroyed. Why? Someone got to the bees. Not the bees. Oh no, not the bees. Oh no, my eyes. Tim, look at this. <laughs> Come <laughs> Who did this? This is an act of aggression, dude. This oh, I is see. A... I see a guy. This is a declaration of war. Did we find him? Maybe. Did we find the culprit? We have to beat him up. I see a, gore- a gray dwarf. Could have been him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make him suffer. Make him pay. That I could have just killed a random innocent gray dwarf. <laughs> yeah, the premise what? of review, if you've never heard of it, is uh-huh. I don't I don't have a hammer by the way, so I can't remake these uh, beehives. That's, <laughs> that's fine. I hope I have the inventory space for all this. So the premise of review is a guy, a character is this character played by um, Andy Daly is the host of a TV show that is like a sort of I guess a reality show in a way technically, but he is reviewing life anything and life and every, experiences. Yeah, anything and everything from user submitted prompts basically like someone will send them a, a, an email or tweet or whatever however they get to him just like re- reviewing anything and sometimes it's like very minimal of like hey what's it like having eating like there was one where it's like what's it like eating five pancakes he's like okay does that and then he gets another one where it's like what's it like eating 15 pancakes so he does that and that ends up being was that where it started ramping or was or did he go beyond that i think it started off at 15 and it became 30. (laughs) something like that and then i think that was the was that the same episode where he where someone asked him to review divorce yeah (laughs) and so 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 the thing also another part of it is he plays it straight where he has to actually go through that experience so he goes through a divorce he divorces his wife and he can't tell her the truth that it's for a review yeah. right <laughs> and so it it's that show is basically a, just a downward spot spiral of all of his of all the consequences of his actions re- revolving around this show of reviewing things i don't know if there's a a name for this type of comedy but if you've ever watched the office tim do you do you remember the scott's tots episode where it's like this is funny but also uncomfortable to watch yeah yeah it's i would put review in that type of category you know what i mean it's not quite like cringe humor or whatever right i did i was purposely avoiding the word cringe because i don't consider it cringe but it's like watching a train wreck and it's funny yeah. and you can't look you can't look away. And then at what some was your point favorite in the later review that he did. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> the pancakes one is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Just because how simple it was, and then <laughs> contrasted with whatever other weird thing happened in that episode, which was like I think was the divorce. I think to me it was like one of the funnier ones, funnier bits was like in a later season where he's already passed his divorce and living with his dad. 
he moved in back he moved back in with his dad and one of the reviews was i think it was what's it like being a little person or something like that and so he oh. had to play that out <laughs> and he was just walking on his knees the whole time and there was a moment where he's trying to cook dinner in the kitchen by himself and something catches fire and instead of just standing up and grabbing a an ex fire extinguisher out of reach he just panics and runs out of the house and burns the house down <laughs> it's stuff like that just like committing to the bit to the extreme i had to look up this review because i i forgot how the the bit was but there was one episode where the user submitted thing was forest please review there all is aching and right he didn't understand what that meant so he's i think the entire episode is him like making sentence structures that th didn't make sense but it was like an error and it's they're all is aching is supposed to be the real alley or something like that and she wanted a review on bubble baths <laughs> right yeah that's right because they it was just like a weird i don't know if it was just like a typo on their end or yep. <laughs> just somehow they updated their their review system and submission system or something like that i remember it being some weird mishap and so it was like a deep philosophical thing for him trying to understand what it, what it was all about Speaking of that type of humor, where uh, it's meant to make you uncomfortable, let's talk about Nathan for You, which we watched a lot of this year. Watched all of it. Did we watch? Did we, yeah. Did we really finish the entirety of it? Oh, all right. Yeah. I might have missed some of the early episodes when you started. Yeah, that's it, possible. But, uh, yeah. That I got into because I had found out about um, his show, The, the Rehearsal. Rehearsal. Yeah, because that came out this year, or last year. Um, and so, before watching that, I'm like, I want to kind of understand what this guy's, like, humor is before committing to this new show. Uh, I'm just going to watch, check out a few episodes of Nathan for You. And, um... There's a lot that happens in that show, similar to, like, <laughs> Review uh-huh where it's he plays it straight where he's i don't know providing consultation to small businesses or something i don't even know how people contact him and i'm i don't know if any of this is a bit or if it's just purely people in the real world just contacting it's... for consultation or what i'm never quite sure if it's actors who are in on the bit or if yeah. it's true. <laughs> I know some of it some of it like ends up being a thing that comes out of it like the dumb Starbucks bit that was uh -huh. made up for the show that ended up becoming like a thing in the local in the actual news cycles and everything. Or the guy who got buffed by lifting boxes and people actually bought into it. Right. He he wrote a book and he was and featured on morning book. news TV shows. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's Ooh. very it's very plausible for someone to not know who this guy is because like, still like he goes unnoticed by so many people anyway. Also, there's that one private invest like the private investigator. The first time you saw him, I think he did he wasn't sure what was going on, but yeah. as he got featured more, it's like he's he's got to be in on it at this point, oh, yeah. right? I forgot what his name was, but you know the you know the guy I'm talking about, the private Is it investigator like Wolf or something like that. Yeah, and he ended up weirdly getting his own show for a bit. Yeah. I think one of my one of my favorite episodes was like in the earlier seasons, um, where he does a bit for some gas station or something. And to help bring in customers, he advertises a really low price on the gas station, like signs and everything. Uh -huh. But then in small print, it says after mail-in, after rebate. It's not a mm -hmm. mail-in rebate or an in, 
it's an in-person rebate where they have to deliver the rebate to a Dropbox on a mountain in the desert or something. <laughs> and so people, and surprisingly, a lot of people are up for it, despite like it being a huge inconvenience. And so that ends up turning into a big small like businesses is like the worst. <laughs> yeah. It's always like, oh, hey, you, uh, we ch changed the sign and now it's, we fixed it. Like there was a, I remember another episode where he had to, um, it was like a souvenir shop, like a few blocks away from a lot of the touristy districts of LA. Uh -huh. And to support them, he decided we should pretend we're filming a movie here so that it attracts people to this location and in doing it he finds out um it's illegal to do what he did so to to make it legal he um submits the mo he actually finishes the movie and then submits it to like actual awards and everything but that's not successful so he makes his own award ceremony Wait, so the then, part that was illegal that was the idea that they're filming a like a fake movie it was like f it was like filming it without their per without the people's permission or something like uh, that. okay like all the all the extras or randos who were coming in on the store and everything like um... some of them wanted their money back and so to make it actually authentic so like part of that show is it feels like he's just conning a bunch of people but then like yep. <laughs> It's all in a weird way, too. I feel like I keep going to the same boxes multiple times trying to find a thing, but forgetting what I'm trying to find. I think another favorite of mine, you might remember, you definitely remember this when there was a, like a real estate lady who she had, he suggested that he be, she become like a spirit medium real estate. Right, <laughs> that yeah. would be her theme. Tim, if you had to hang out with Forrest McNeil or Nathan Fielder, who would you hang out with? Nathan Fielder. Yeah. Yeah. I, that seems I like you'll, a, you'll be fine. I have a great idea for your uh, YouTube channel and proceeds to pitch the most ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keeping. Do you want to talk about the rehearsal for a bit? Because that's also a Nathan. Like, yeah, that one, it's, I feel like a lot of that one is much more like everyone's in on the bit, right? <laughs> Surely, right? Uh, because there's more so. Because there's also that later, well, the quick premise is that, uh, you know, for the rehearsal, it's more so like he helps people through their personal situations by having them go through like a simul a simulated version of that, like oh I I have trouble like uh, you know confessing to my friend that my my job is actually fake, so he'll hire like a fake version that, of that friend who kind of looks like that friend, and they have to rehearse out how he's going to confess that his job has been fake this entire time. But then that series slowly devolved into a B plot where he's in a fake he's rehearsing a fake family that he started taking too seriously, right? Am I remembering yeah. this correctly? I think the thing that immediately sold me on that show was when they pan out from the very first interview with like one of the guys, and it's in a, a fake version of, the, of that guy's home that's been built entirely inside of a warehouse or whatever, and it's just like they built a set of that guy's home. And then they explain how he did that. Yes. <laughs> by having like various people like maintenance or or a plumber or whoever just happens to visit, like basically scout out his home. And then they recreated it in a in a studio or warehouse thing. And it's funny, like the budget, like the large budget that he goes through just for these weird bits. He was making that HBO money at that point. Yeah. I, sh I, I guess we should note that Nathan for you was Comedy Central and, and then uh, the rehearsal was HBO, right? Yeah. 
That's right. HBO think, money. He got, think, he got a I chance to recreate. HBO. Oh, was Nathan for you not Comedy Central? Am I misremembering? It was like that's where it aired, but like it's okay. you can watch it on HBO, and then I think it's also on Hulu. No, oh. so I think that's where I watched it. Um, I don't think we have a place for. I don't think we care about dandelions because I just have one. I'm trying to empty out my inventory. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll put this in here. Oh, did we actually get anything going with iron? Or is it still smelting over there? I smelted some. Was Murderville the one where it's like... I forgot that actor's name, but he brings in different celebrities and they have to like solve a mystery together, right? Yeah. It was Will Arnett. There we go. Yeah, yeah that was a good. Sh that was a good premise. The and premise is too, good, but, like, but it's like the the guest that they bring in has to. It depends on the guest they bring in, right? Yeah, yeah. They have to understand what the bit is, and you know, embrace it. You know. Yeah. So the the premise was like you have Will Arnett playing a character in a fictional show or whatever. But then they bring in some celebrity guest who's themselves play who has to play along with the rest of the premise of the show or whatever the plot. But they don't have any script or anything, so they're improvising the the guest is improvising the whole thing mm -hmm. while everyone else is, you know, continuing with the rest of the show as if they were you know, just normal actors for so it is like a weird mix of scripted and improvised comedy that worked really well. Onan was one of the uh, one of the guys, yeah. right? Yeah, and so it, it, that also becomes a weird like sort of situation as well, where um, it's similar to like I guess Nathan for you and review, where they're just like just trying to get this other person to do something ridiculous just to as if they're the character playing the role or whatever uh -huh. like it could just be something simple of like make all these weird ridiculous food orders at a restaurant or something and just keep doing it like I don't remember anything specific from that show but I remember enjoying it I like the premise a lot yeah, but it it falls into that trap of like some guests end up being stronger than others because yeah you know just some 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 of the guests they brought in are just naturally more good at improv and you know thinking on their toes to do do or say something clever with Will Arnett. It's kind of like the on Eric, the Eric Andre show where like if they oh, get yeah. a guest who's not in it who's not in on the bit, it could either go well because yep. or it could go <laughs> off like really terribly or whatever I, don't, I made all this bronze for no reason <laughs> you have to kill the bronze yeah no I end up finding the, the cultivator which is what I wanted so I guess I don't need to get core wood is there any actual wood I can use to make more arrows I am continuing to make meat just so we have something to fall back on when we decide to get serious about going out to that uh, that area with more iron armor. I don't know if I should destroy these rocks or not, but I'm going to. I think I should put the farm right out here and just kind of right up front. Uh-huh. At least that's what I'm thinking. What is outer range? That's on the list. I don't know what that is. That one I found out about from just like Twitch ads or whatever. Oddly enough. Um, it was like advertised on Twitch. This was like an Amazon show, I guess. Okay. Um, and I'm like, oh, that seems kind of neat. No, I don't know what the premise is. And then I completely forgot about it. And then 
I just went on like a, a little short binge of watching. Is it hot ones? Oh. And, <laughs> um. What's the guy's name? The actor that played Thanos. Totally blank. Oh, Judge John. Berlin. Judge Berlin. Yeah. He was on it, and he was he was on that show talking about um this the show he's in. I'm like, okay. He didn't really mention anything about the show, so I'm like, oh right, that's that show. I should check it out. Um So the premise is so it's a sci-fi show. Um where you've got Josh Brolin who is the owner of a, who is a rancher in Montana, I think. Um and he just stumbles across like a giant a massive like hole in the ground that is like perfectly shaped and and big like a big void in the ground and so he's just like all right i'll uh leave this alone this seems weird and then at some point he comes back to it and i don't remember exactly what happened but he falls in or something comes out the other side of like having deja vu of some situation so uh it sort of becomes like a weird wormhole it's like time travel thing in a weird oh. way but it was a show that i'm like i'll check this out i'll watch an episode or two it's just like one saturday evening at all meeting dinner or whatever i ended up watching the entire season just in one city <laughs> Like I did not expect to do to enjoy it that much, but it's just, and it wasn't like very cliffhangery, I guess. But it's just like following this family, with having like some rancher dispute between like another family, while also having this sci-fi backdrop. What is eighteen ninety nine? Um, that is also a sci-fi series. Uh, Ooh. so that's like a period, period piece set in 1899. Um, this was like a Netflix show that came out like late or sometime in November, I think. Um, so the premise is that there is this boat traveling from Europe to America that is filled with a bunch of people who are just like immigrating to the u.s and so you got like a wide variety of people with different like from different places and whatnot so the, you see a bunch of different languages and stuff um and then they come across like another um large boat shipping boat or whatever and it's just completely abandoned just in the middle of the ocean it's just empty and so they check it out and then it turns into like this long winding like a bunch of twists and whatnot of um like it feels like it's simulated but it's also not and then there's also a lot of other time travel -y stuff it's there's just a lot of stuff going on in that show that's like kind of hard to explain any one particular thing without kind of going into all of it but it's it's a really good show um it's by the same creator same creators as a show called dark which is i think one of my favorite shows of all time 1899 was on amazon uh netflix okay um unfortunately that show was canceled on netflix oh. for whatever reason because netflix has been going through a round of just canceling shows lately i think the idea was that it didn't have enough views despite it I think they put it like back to back with the show Wednesday, which ended up being really popular, but I don't know. It's also possible it just gets chopped around to another streaming service or something. What is a severance, which you also have on your list? Um So that's a show I knew nothing about going in other than it taking other than it being some kind of workplace thing. Some kind of workplace sci-fi drama show or whatever. And you just With... leaned into the sci-fi stuff less last year, huh? <laughs> I mean I I love I love good sci-fi stuff. 
like shows and movies and stuff. But this one was like Adam Scott is um Ooh. He works at some company where he doesn't know what he does there because what they do is um the premise is that they when they go in for work every day their memory is essentially like split up so that um their work life is kind of like s siloed off from the real world so like the the work life is kind of like doesn't know what the real life version of them is and the the real version real world version doesn't know what's going on at work so it's like there's like a um a lot of tension there and it's like a really weird workplace too that it's not a comedy or anything but it is like has some weird elements to it and it has it has christopher walken and john turturro in it and they're both great in it and i think that was like the most recent that's definitely the most recent thing i've seen um christopher walken in, which was kind of a surprise to me seeing him in it Tell me about House of Dragons, Tim. Um, so this was the spin-off, like prequel of the Game of Thrones. That's what I thought it was. Um, I just didn't want to say yeah. it. I wasn't sure if that was it. Yeah, and it's like if you liked Game of Thrones, it's more of that. But if it feels much more condensed where like game of thrones kind of just spans the entire world of that show or like multiple continents or whatever this is kind of like following just like a family or whatever over the course of however many years and it's just all through a, the various drama between the various family members and stuff but i i don't know if i necessarily like it more than game of thrones but it is like it's still pr it ended up being a lot better than i expected it to be Okay. How how many seasons are they into that? Oh, this is this is just the first season that just came out this past year. Oh, okay. But it ended up being a lot better than I thought it would be. I guess the last one we have on your shows list that uh, we haven't mentioned yet is Sandman. Yeah, which I don't. That, so that is they finally got around to making it. Um, this was a show based on the comic book series. I don't know how familiar are with that at all, Jeff. Are we talking Sandman, Spider-Man, Sandman? No. Uh, this okay. is uh, Neil Gaiman, who has kind of just done a bunch of different stuff. Um, but Sandman is sort of, I guess, technically in some way associated with the DC universe. But not really. Um it was its own like independent um i think it was part of vertigo or whatever but it's very much follows this character sandman who's like a not a god per se but sort of he's like the god of dreams or whatever and okay. the comic book series and and the show is pretty much following it for the most part um and it's very much like an anthology in a way of in some respect of just like keep it off uh where they where it's this character who kind of just shows up at various points in history or all throughout the world or whatever in the universe and whatnot and he just kind of helps people out or whatever but like the the starting point of the series is that um you had some cultists in like I think it was, I forget if it was London or if it was New England. Um, they were trying to summon Death, who is his sister, and then capture her so that they could, like, use her for whatever purpose of, like, I don't know, immortality or whatever. But then they end up getting the wrong one and getting him, pulling him into, like, their summoning circle thing and capturing him. And so he's just kind of been captured for like, he was captured for like um, almost a century. 
while people, while all sorts of <laughs> struggles are happening in the real world where like people are stuck in dreams or whatever, or are not dreaming in some cases. So it's like a, it's a lot of, a lot of fantasy and horror and all kinds of elements and stuff in it. But it, it took them, this was like a, a comic book series from the early nineties that it took forever for any kind of studio to make because of just like how expansive it is as far as like different settings and whatnot. Tim, I think we got through your list of shows that you put on here. What would you say was the best show that you watched in 2022? Um, oh, that's yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Uh huh. Like for comedies, I think After Party, maybe Rehearsal. I don't know. Like, Rehearsal ended up being like pretty good, like as a drama, too. Like, surprisingly, it ended up being pretty, um, I don't know if wholesome is the right word to describe it, you know, <laughs> for some as for some aspects of it at least. I don't know. Is heartwarming the word you're looking for? Heartwarming, yeah. heartwarming, I guess. Yeah. Not all of it, but definitely some of it. <laughs> I'm just kind of a little a little bummed about 1899, basically not getting a full. I think they were originally playing for like three seasons, but it only got, it's at the moment, it's only got one and who knows if it'll continue out elsewhere. Oh, we should discuss, I think you should leave because that was something we, you know, not necessarily from last year, but right. we started watching it last year. Yeah. Was it last year? Uh -oh. Did you know that we have like 11 Sterling cores over on this side house? Yeah, I, I stored them there. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, what? That was... Where do these come from? Yeah, they've been there the whole time. Been here the whole time, Ron. <laughs> if I had to pick my favorite thing that I watched from last year, that if I'm allowed to pick shows that didn't actually release last year, I pick. I, I would pick, I think I, you should leave. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. I'm definitely looking forward to more of that. How, how would we describe <laughs> that? That it's like sketch comedy, but like, yeah, not it was. I remember watching some one of the sketches on YouTube, and there was a comment that perfectly encapsulated that that show, and um. it was something along the lines of like the characters like the that the main guy is playing tim robinson mm -hmm. um he basically gets either rolls a nat one or a nat 20 in social situations yep. <laughs> and that's like the perfect explanation for it it's just like and you don't know what it's gonna like how any of it is gonna turn out when you're watching it just because it's just so full of like weird twists of like of just how th any situation goes. I think uh, one of my the one of the uh, sketches or skits that was most memorable to be to me is like he has a bumper sticker on his car that's like honk if you're horny. I was just and thinking like, of that one. A guy starts honking furiously. <laughs> yep. And like stalks him through the week on in his driveway honking his horn. It's like it's just a joke, man. And like it takes so many twists and turns because it's like, do, do you have any any nudie mags in your trunk or something? Like, why would I have that? It's like he totally does. But then, like he ends up, they're at a funeral and he ends up singing at the funeral or something. Yep. I... And wasn't Tim Robis Robinson like formerly an SNL writer or something? Yeah, I... that sounds right. So you also get that vibe that like some of the comedy on this show is like the stuff he probably wanted to do on SNL, yeah. but either, you know, for whatever reason, they probably didn't let him.
And of course, you and I both enjoy the catalog of Tim Robinson memes <laughs> that are uh, abundant on, on Discord. They're just used all over the... I see them used all the time. And there's <laughs> there's one that just kind of became evergreen. And that's the the guy in the hot dog suit going, we're all trying to find the guy who did this. And it's <laughs> it's used in so many situations I, I see all over the internet. And it's just like, it perfectly fits everything. Uh, again, for, for anyone who's not familiar with that show, like there's a... A hot dog car that has crashed into like a like a fashion store or something and everyone's like trying to recover like are you okay are you okay it's like he tim robinson's in the hot dog suit like we're all trying to find the guy who did this it's literally a hot dog car and then he tries to blame it on other people <laughs> and then he goes on some weird monologue about whatever how he used to do whatever and then it's just I don't know. There, there's a lot of good bits in that show that are just completely out of left field that you don't expect. I like the one <laughs> where, uh, you know, they get called into a meeting or something. He's in the middle of his lunch break. He's about to bite into a hot dog. <laughs> and like, he, he wants to finish his hot dog, but he's getting called into this meeting. He walks into the boardroom with his arm like this and the, like, the hot dog in his sleeve, and he's constantly... Like going like this while his boss is talking. <laughs> Did I use? I all lost my. Call? What's that? I think I used all my call. I gotta go uh. get more. You know, Tim. I, I know you feel bad about uh, what was it, 1899, not getting oh. another season. If you're looking for a, a show that's uh, been around for a while, I could recommend to you uh, WWE SmackDown, or oh, perhaps WW. No thanks. <laughs> Knowing the the people involved in that company, definitely not. Oh, dude, is this? Can we talk about the shenanigans? I know you won't really understand what's going on, Tim, but I can talk about some of the stuff that's been going on with like Vince McMahon stepping down. Because of the, some of the stuff that got revealed from his past, but now he's coming back, and and Triple H was doing such a good job while he was away, and now Vince McMahon is coming back, and it's like, is the show gonna be bad again now that Vince McMahon is back? It's a lot of layers to that stuff. And then there there is also possibility of it. I don't know if it actually happened or not. I don't follow it closely, but. Was there something about possibly selling to Saudi Arabia or something? It's just like oh, that was cool. a thing that got passed around on Twitter and it turned out to be false. Okay. But I, but at the same time, I it guess wouldn't it's surprise not me. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, consider like they're. Oh. Yep they they go there like once a year or something yeah. to do a show. And there's some talent on the roster that's like, no, I'm not going to this. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that company is just so messed up, like for what they put right. everyone through. Right. Like I think no one has like, true health care or anything yeah, like that. It's everyone's a contractor, but they can't go out elsewhere. They're not allowed to work elsewhere. So like any other wrestling organizations, they have they don't have health care or anything, despite like all the ridiculous stuff they put everyone through. Right. Did, you like, probably saw that same John Oliver thing then, right? Where he talked about all that? I've seen that, but I've seen other stuff like that too. Yeah. As a kid, I used to dream of being a pro wrestler. Obviously, my physique stopped me, stopped that from happening. But as beyond that, like also thinking about the travel and how you might get paid six figures, but then they're not gonna pay for your travel and, you know, hotel room and all that. So it's like, okay, I make six figures, but like how much of that goes toward just showing up to the job, you know? What is this we have in this chest? Ancient bark, what does that get used for? We have so much of that. We're constructing something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what.
I think I should rewatch Dark now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> rewatch it what? It was a show called Dark that I mentioned briefly. It was um, same creator as 1899. Oh. That's um, might as well tell you a little bit of the premise, but uh, it's it's a Netflix show. It's entirely in German. Um, it's set in like a rural German town where um, some kids some kid goes missing and then they also find some other kid but they can't identify who they are or anything they have because it's just some random kid they find just a body or whatever and then it's also like a big a big mystery and it's also a lot of sci-fi stuff going on but i don't want to kind of explain anything about it because there's it's a big um twist and plot point to it It was definitely like one of my one of if not my favorite show of all time. Oh. We did also start watching Legion, which we never finished. Can I be can I be upfront with you, Tim? Yeah. I like I like Legion, but also I'm never quite sure what's happening in Legion. Yeah. I think we were like when I originally watched it, I kind of just watched a lot of it in a shorter period of time than spreading out over like <laughs> months or whatever. And we still didn't even finish it. It's not like a particularly long show or anything. Like I appreciate that Legion does like wacky things. That's just fun. To, like there's like a dance scene, right? Like a dance battle yeah. or something. A lot of wacky stuff. And for those who don't know, it's like based on the Marvel... Marvel character? Yeah. Right? Who's the son of Professor Xavier? Yeah. Right? Am I? Yep. I'm some Marvel fans going to be like, he's totally wrong. No, you're right. But it, it also, like, walks that line of never explicitly mentioning Professor Xavier or the X-Men or anything yeah. like that. So it's also its own thing. It really tries to establish that it's its own thing. I think I've got all the iron smelting or smelted. Do we have enough to make an armor set? Um, let's see what we need. What do I got left? All right, that's going to do some farming, but I might as well figure out the seed situation too. The seed situation. Did we not have? Did we have seeds anywhere? Yeah, it's in the the shack the storage. Area. Yeah, there's like a uh, there's a box titled plants and seeds. I don't know if it's gonna have what you need. Okay. Oh. Uh oh, what's up? An iron helm requires twenty iron. How much iron do we have? Out of my curiosity. It's like around 40. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a big investment. Oh, I don't even see the rest of the iron stuff. Do we want to make weapons oh, or right, armor first? Oh, it looks like all the iron, like the, the greaves and the scale mail are also 20. It's all equivalent. That's cool. Armor or weapons first? How did we do it with the bronze? Um, probably weapons. An iron axe is 20. An iron oh battle axe is 35. Oh, wait, that's oh two hands. Yeah, is there going to be some? It's, it's going to be an investment. I remember we prioritized the pickaxe first for the bronze because we that was yeah. necessary to, to, to mine certain things, right? Yeah. Oh, core wood. We need that. Is there anything we can use to upgrade this? What is a crafting station? Oh, no, that's st store cutter. Stone cutter. Oh, right, because we can make... We can make a stone building. 
using stone. Is there a benefit to making a stone version rather than what we have now? I mean, it's just more durable. Uh, we can make an anvil, but again, that's going to that's gonna require 20, 20 iron for the anvil to improve the forge. And I don't know what improving it does for us. I remember seeing chains somewhere. Those are used for one of the things. We use the chains for something else. It might we might be in one of the summer homes. Chains might be one of those things we put in one of the summer home boxes. I definitely saw some somewhere. I don't remember where. And I didn't really see any, like, at least I didn't see any seeds in there either, so I just will start looking for seeds. Oh, here's some, well, one chain. Cool. Gotta get chains. That's the one that makes you sick, right? Yeah. I don't know what the use is for. To quickly evacuate any misplaced meal and start a new. I don't know what that. Oh, I guess if you're. If you want to eat a better meal or something and you've eaten one of a certain type. Tim, do you want to talk about anime of 2022? And by talk about, I guess you'll listen to me ramble about anime of 2022. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know what it was about that last year, but there was that. How would I describe this type this type of genre of anime? The main character is a normie, just trying to do a guy who's just trying his best to be a normie, and a a girl comes into his life who's just bothering him <laughs> and they fall in love. <laughs> like not even like being his dream girl or anything like uh, that, that, that theme is like the magic pixie dream girl, right? This is just like a girl coming into his life, bothering him. <laughs> like uh, I, I went into that rabbit hole of please don't toy with me. Nagatoro san. Uzaki wants to hang out my dress up, darling. And it's all kind of, I guess my dress up darling doesn't lean into that bit, but Uzaki and Nagatoro, just girls bothering the main guy, but they're also in love. For the, for the record, I'm into the slice of life stuff, so that's why, that's why I got into that rabbit hole. But uh, I think Nagatoro-san is just now starting its second season. I'm waiting for the dub. Yes, I'm the guy who watches the dub. I think Uzaki, Uzaki wants to hang out is already in the midst of its second season. I have not heard about My Dress Up Darling having a second season yet. Maybe I just missed it. But my anime of 2022, I'll give it to Nagatoro-san. There you go. You, you liked it so much, we uh, use it as our transition. Yeah, actually, that's right. We use it as the, the cat meow transition is Nagatoro. I mean, it just so happened to be like right around when we it was probably like right around when we started streaming. And so we're like, hey, we should have a transition. Also, they're using a transition that's fun. Let's, let's just use that <laughs> and edit it to be for it to be our own thing. Well, I got some we carrots. will hope that the creators of Nagatoro Sun don't hate us for it. We hope that they recognize it's because we have a reverence for that show. 
Uh, we're doing better on the meat situation. I'm putting it in the chest over here, but I'm trying. I would like to find because I remember this chest being stocked up. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get us back to that point. I'm gonna go out to the black forest to find some more seeds. What do you need the seeds for? Farming. Oh, I just okay. Planted a bunch of carrots. I don't know if there's something better I can put in there. I'm not sure what carrots are used for. <laughs> but yeah, just carrots. How does the as long as we're here, like, what is the, how does the farming work in this game? I, uh, I've, so I've um, seen... A... There's a cultivator tool okay. that you till the ground with, and then it lets you place seeds in it. So, a lot of my understanding of this genre of game comes from Minecraft, as you know. Yeah. And I've seen some elaborate Minecraft setups where people would set up a farm set up redstone switches that make everything automate nothing Is like that, that. <laughs> nothing okay what is this for oh you've got a cauldron thing going or no this is you don't have to actually do anything for this it was the um the barrel you do the thing for where you have to wait. You have to add something to the fermenter. Oh, okay. Where, like, similar to the cooking, where you put a thing on there and then you have to wait a little bit. The actual cauldron is, like, it's instant. And you click craft. Did we put up a fence around the farm? Or... Uh, nope. Because I just accidentally stepped on it a bit. I'm like, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I ruined our farm. I don't know if that does anything. But I could... Add a fence. It's up to like I don't know if like uh, enemies stepping on enemies have the power to ruin uh, it or anything like that. Probably. Knowing video games, probably. I did watch my own anime, Jeff. Oh, go on. It was one I made. No. <laughs> You made that's what I mean anime. by that's what I mean by my own no um this one I kind of been periodically jumping into or I'd go into short burst and I finally got around got back to it go on way. uh it's Jojo's bizarre adventure oh I think it you was... mentioned that how are you liking it um I'm enjoying it it's really it's really dumb. I, I my understanding of JoJo is that it's dumb in the good type of way. Yeah, it's very like it uses a lot of the anime tropes uh, that you see all the time of like some guy fighting someone and then two seconds later explains something that clearly didn't happen, but then they're just explaining, and somehow that. It's like, oh, you didn't see me actually do this thing that I totally did. And then it's like, no, you didn't actually do that. But then them explaining it, it's just like, oh, it's real. Because they explained that it's happened. I have a friend who's uh, super into anime. And he did uh, his own stream recently. I don't know if it was a stream or a YouTube video. Where he went down his my anime list, and he rated every anime he's ever seen one by one. And I was his name is uh, I I, I want to make sure I get his YouTube channel Real Matcher Road or something if anyone wants to look him up. But like, I was just fascinated that he watched so many, and he was like one by one ranking them, and he was able to remember so many of them. And of course, me being casual i just skipped to what, what he rated detective conan because i wanted to see what he rated detective conan <laughs> <laughs> that's a series you might like tim detective conan just like uh short mystery episodes whodunit episodes locked room you know every now and then they'll have the locked room mystery why is uh... a foul smell from the swamp what is going on do you see this is something oh, hey, bad happening? Skeleton. Mr. Skeleton's something... here. 
Yeah, we got an invade. Oh, we got a. There's a big red circle. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Oh boy. Yeah, we got a Draugr here. What was I using against these guys? Wait a minute. Well, I, I, I need to find you, well, Tim. Maintain a tight perimeter. No, I died. Oh, you I died? Died. Yeah, like right outside the home. Oh. But I'll get there. Oh no. Tim, I'm scared. Doesn't help that it's dark. I'm gonna try to lure like, them away so you can pick up your equipment. I need like a, a fireman's pole. Oh hey, the the guys are fighting each other. The skeletons, the shaman. Or four. Did you pick up your stuff? Yeah. Okay. Just trying to get my armor on. They're chasing me. A... Oh, okay. <laughs> Did I not have pants? I don't know what happened to my pants. Tim, I'm fighting for my life over here. You're over there you're like, where's my pants, fam? <laughs> Come on, No, I, didn't, I don't think I ever... I don't have any. Like, I didn't have any on my corpse, so that's why I'm like, what happened to them? All right, I need to pick up my equipment now because I just died. I think I'm going to pick up my stuff, retreat back to the house, put it all on, and then come help you. Has this ever happened during our runs? Yeah. Oh, no. Not, I set my spawn swamps. point as the other home. I mean, you got portals. No, oh, I mean, mean like oh, the, the OG. Uh, whoops. We'll let them burn it down, Tori. Remember when I mentioned the stone home, stone buildings? Uh -huh. This would be why. Oh, the red circle is gone. What is? Oh, the gods are merciful. Go home. Do you like Ario Speedwagon? Sometimes. Do you like Robert EO Speedwagon? I feel like we make this joke every time. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's one of my favorite characters from Joe's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> he's just the guy there just to explain everything going on. When everyone's like, yeah, we know if we're right here doing it. All right, I'm going to try to do some Ornstein and Smo tactics here to try to get them stuck on something. Where is, which one is the real good stuff? What? <laughs> My corpse. Like, I don't remember which one's which because I've died. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Which which one I am in terms of name? Like, am I macaroni or am I cheese? I was wondering who was firing arrows. It's the skeleton. Yep. Don't you heal yourself? Oh, boy. Oh, I should have set my spawn point in the house while I was still over there. I have to run back again. This guy's just fully healed. Did they? Well, this, this shaman. 
I want to kill the shaman, but... Okay, there you go. Two shot. Where's these other guys? What are they doing? No, they're breaking stuff. Oh boy. This has turned into a disastrous episode of Valheim. This was supposed to be cozy boy hours. There was nothing cozy about these hours. All right, I'm going to pick I... up my stuff, make a run for the bed so I can set that as my spawn point. Try not to have to keep running back. Sure would be nice if the skeleton stopped shooting at me for a second. And it wasn't cold, so I could regain some stamina. <laughs> All right, I set my spawn point. I'm coming back out to help you. I'm the distraction. All right. You feel arrested. Thanks, fam. I don't believe you. Don't worry, Tim. I'm coming. How many are left? Do you have a head count? I have a skeleton shooting at me and a draugr. I don't know what else. Let me see if I can deal with the skeleton. Oh, and a One less guy to worry about. Join up from the forest. Okay, skeleton's done. Alright, let's Drawing tag around. team these jabronis. Right. Well, maybe you'll just 2v1v2 two two them. What happened to the Draugrs? I don't know. Man, they just asserted dominance over us and left. Feels bad, man. Yeah, I don't know what happened. At least they didn't ruin the farm. I, s I swear to God, if I see that our beehives are ruined, I'm going to fall to my knees and yell. Well, Jeff... Get Yo! Ready. <laughs> Not, the, Not bees. the bees! There's always that one guy who shows up. I'm just here to kill the bees. Mama only got a taste of honey, but she wanted the whole beehive. There's a brood after me and wants the bees. Sword's much better than my spear. Alright, I guess I'm fixing beehives right now. <laughs> Again. Perhaps this is where we can set up a fence. Hey. I guess the, the, this ground is so uneven that I don't know if I could put up You're a good fence. It. With what tool finds it? It's the hoe. Run that by me again, Tim. <laughs> it's the hoe. Uh huh. It's the hoe. We're gonna get that as a sound bit. <laughs> We're adding that to the soundboard. We do a moat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, now, now that we've experienced the pain of being invaded like that, we have to re we've been rethink before. our defense. Uh, this is the first time we got properly bodied, though, right? We haven't been hit by trolls yet, have we? Is that a oh, thing that happens? Yeah. I think before trying to even work on uh, getting to the um, bone mass. We should have proper defenses and everything here.
because from what I understand, like each boss you defeat essentially increases the difficulty for the raids that happen. Oh boy. And we're not well defended here. Well, you know, we got a lot of. Uh, yeah, you had a pickaxe, or you should. Uh, it's probably in my chest. I think I'm just gonna build a moat. I have and not seen what this will look like. Like, I don't know what this is gonna I'm look just, like. You, you... I'm just finding up. I'm just digging a moat somewhere, <laughs> a perimeter. You know, if we have a tro troll's raid us, it's all the more appropriate. We have a troll head displayed at the top of our home just to really just upset them, you know? We are at the hour 30 mark. If you're down to keep co keep going, I'm down for it also. But just wanted to give you the quick time check. Alright. Fun. Oh, the chains are over here on this. Oh, well, you we only have one of 50 chains, but it's over here at yeah. the side house. Yeah, I saw one. I don't know if that's the same one or not. Yeah, it's the same one. I honestly don't know how effective a moat will be, but it'll help. Tim, I feel like you're building this moat, and we're going to be really proud of it, and we're going to see a troll just step over it. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, that's why I'm also thinking of putting a wall, too. But Yeah, I'm, I would... If I had to prioritize one, I would say the wall over the moat. And we do have a lot of stones. Just Let's these stacks over here. Do... We could do stakes. And those work. The stake wall thing. Stake and shake? Yeah. When was the last time you were at a steak and shake? Uh, I wasn't in one, but I, I ordered some delivery from one just the other day. Oh. Double cheeseburger, still excellent. I'm trying to remember if they are the one, the place that does like the... The burgers are like the weird um, f fried thin edges or whatever like crispy edges or whatever I did not examine my burger closely enough to have <laughs> I, I just ate it immediately oh no my pickaxe I need you <laughs> Bro. Moat's already working. Done. Easy. This guy's trying to find his way here. Let me see. Yeah, let me walk on over there. He's trying to figure his way over here. Alright, something's attacking something. Uh, why is a boar here? I don't have the inventory space. I'll pick up the uh, boar meat. Or what is it that dropped? Oh, I don't want to eat the trophy. I don't know what else dropped.
Hmm. You know, we haven't really needed to use the cart since that one time. <laughs> well, we were transporting bronze or iron or something. Yeah. We used it a lot whenever we were transferring stuff from like the all those copper places, copper mines or whatever. There it is. Now, now it's coming back to me. But like we're kind of separated from everything else. We're on a big island. wondering why I had so much of my inventory space taken up. It's because I've been digging. Just places, it just, I get a bunch of stone from it. Which actually, yeah, we could use this to then start making stone walls or something. That's what I'm saying. We get these stone, these piles of stone just building up I over here. I don't know here. how effective these are as walls, though. I'm going to test something. Uh-huh. Are you, we're going to QA something here real quick. I don't think that's effective. What was that? Yeah, what was that? I mean, I'm going to take a quick look at the perimeter here. Were we invaded by a ship that had used a cannon on us? What was that? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be some amazing ish? It's us, the th Sea of Thieves. We're here. Oh no. I don't see anything. Oh. Uh -huh. Turns out it was a tree we left hanging and eventually collapsed. Ooh, a deer. Wow. Oh, that was... Well, now it's just running away. Never mind. I don't know why I still have all this rock. I don't need it. What does it take to build this thing? Stone craft... Stone cutter. Two iron. Okay, that's worth doing. We can get some actual proper stone walls. You don't feel rested anymore. Won't feel so good for them. You said in the Black Forest is where we mined iron? That sounds correct? Yeah. Did we have a summer residence by a black forest? Yeah. Oh man, we got so many. Oh, well. Sharpening stone. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to make it. It's grinding wheel. So you made a sharpening stone? Yeah, it improves the forge, I guess. Oh. It levels it up. Level up. Level up. When are we going to play Altered Beast, Tim? I don't know. Just kidding. I'm not that super into Altered Beast. <laughs> it's an intriguing game. Yeah. But I never got into Alfred Beast. It's not as good as it seems it could be. Altered Beast or the thing you're making? No, Altered Beast. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. What is... Look at the size of that lad. I did not expect it to be that big. 
That's what she said. Add, add that to the soundboard, friends. Did she say that? Well, what's the plan? Are we officially a stone home now? Is it, are we committing I'm to not, this? No, I'm not ever play Oh, it was our raft crashing. It was like bumping into the, the docks or whatever. I don't know if I want to do like this main house out of stone because it would require redoing it. Mm -hmm. But like we could do like a stone wall on the out on the exterior. Uh huh. Just as our defenses. Mr. Gorbachev, the question tear is, down. Huh. does that do the enemy spawn? Like, how do the enemy spawn when they they raid us? Could yeah. they spawn within the walls? I don't know. Like how how tightly should we? Hmm. Turns out it's not hard to build the stone walls. You just need to use the stone cutter bench, but you need to be within range of it to actually place them. So you have to like relocate the stone cutter bench. So maybe let's make a tight a tight perimeter of stone wall around the home. Sure. And Maybe that's the play. I, I'll keep doing a mode, I guess. So we can have both. Yeah, why not both? Originally, I was thinking to have a moat and then stake wall, but, you know, let's do both. This and a stone wall. Because I'm actually getting stone for the wall. Let's make, like, a, an elaborate Home Alone type of trap around. It's just a big maze just to get in. Now we increase our jumping ability so high that we jump over everything, but the normie enemies have to elaborately yeah. go through the maze. What? Is your camera blurry, or am I, am I imagining that? Never mind. Looks fine. You looked blurry for a second. I was like, oh. maybe. Did you end up making the sharpening stone then? Because it looks like I can craft. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was a th requirement to make a grinding wheel thing. Oh, so where's then, the grinding wheel at? It's just next to the the forge. It's one of those um, things that you can build to imp upgrade the bench. So it's a higher tier or whatever. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> but I don't know what that actually does. Like having a higher tier forge. So rather than committing to iron, it seems like we can upgrade our bronze stuff with the bronze yeah, we that we like. That. Yeah. Like I don't know how do we quantify whether that's just as good as having iron stuff though as a thing. Wiki. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to look at the wiki. How much? Well, let me see what the bronze situation is at over by the chest. Because if if we're like we had a lot of copper, but not tin, so we didn't yeah. find tin. And I I definitely came across some tin when I went out to the west side of the island. And I didn't really scoop up a bunch. Tree stump falling in. Uh -huh. Usually the max level of the lesser armor set is the same as the first level of the next armor set. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
So maybe we can just max out the bronze we have. And that'll, that'll be... Yeah. That's a good tip. Yeah. Thanks, Majin, dude. On that note, we don't have a lot of bronze in these chests. <laughs> yeah, we just need a lot. We had a lot of copper, I think. Yeah, we're doing we're doing stuck. really good with copper. Are you stuck? Did you get yourself no, stuck in your own moat? <laughs> no, like a, a small bush fell and then a rock fell and I was kind of caught between them. Hold on, I gotta come over there and, and laugh at you. I, I cleared the bush. I actually just want to see how this is set up here. Okay, okay. It's looking like a moat. That's yeah, pretty deep. They can't climb out. Something leveled up, but I didn't see. Probably pickaxe stuff. If you keep going further down this way, you're going to eventually cross over the walkway that we normally use to get back up north. That's fine. All right. We'll replace it with a bridge or something? I don't know. Just have like a walkway or something? Yeah, we'll still want to be able to cross the moat. We don't want to leave it. <laughs> no, dude, we can just jump across. Yeah. That's the, that's the play. We'll jump across every time. This is why we're training our jumping skill. Exactly. See, I just made that jump. Jeff, why don't you go look down there? Oh, let me see. <laughs> Are you giving me a trusty patches situation right now? <laughs> oh, oh. We need to PvP. <laughs> oh no, I fell. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that almost dude. killed me. Jeff, I left tra treasure down there. I'm Trusty Tim, the one and only. Sprinting worked. Yeah, now that I'm seeing how you set this up, like if an enemy falls down here, they don't they don't really got a whole lot of options, do they? Yeah. There was a a, a gray lane that just immediately went down there the first st little bit I started on, and they <laughs> took them a while to even find to get to me. We are closing in on the two-hour mark here, Tim. So I think maybe we can find a good stopping point. Like, is there is there anything spicy you want to do to close this one out? Um, I guess we could go through the portal. You know, remove our armor so that we don't drop anything important. See how much more of that map we can uncover. But the the issue there is that. That portal over on that south side of the map is currently unprotected. I'm worried as soon as we step through the portal, enemies are going to look at us like, oh, look at these jabronis. Let's mess up their portal. I wonder if anything attacks an area that is unoccupied. You you think it's possible? Like if there's not, no one in that area of the map, if it's just kind of left alone. Right. Or that's. So I think I that's the like case we've... for like, that's the case for like Minecraft. I think. But anecdotally, I feel like we've we've gone away from this this spot, come back, and we've seen our beehives messed up. You know what I mean? It could also just be it happens while we're still here, and it. Yeah, we just don't see it. Yeah. If the, like the conundrum, if there's no one around to see it, the, do the player portals really get destroyed? <laughs> yeah. I don't need these. Random bits of like boar meat and leather scraps around here. I don't know when when they yeah, die. Pick those up. We're 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 running short on on food items. I've done my best to cook uh, what I've had on me, but uh, any more we can have. I 
I'm gonna use oh, the cauldron. It's dark. Oh, I might as well clear the map. I don't need my bones on the map. As I'm looking at the cauldron, I'm just now realizing I should have held on to all the times I got the troll fish because there's totally like recipes for that here. Troll fish? Yeah, you can if you go to the cauldron. There's like oh, you can use troll fish to make raw fish or was a sticky fish fishing bait. What? Yeah, I think I found a troll fish one time. I'm like, what is this ish? I don't want this. <laughs> what is this troll fish? I don't see this. In the cauldron? You don't see a troll? Oh, maybe you've never picked up a troll fish. And yeah. So it wouldn't show up. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. We should look into getting um, a fishing pole. Which would have to go to the merchant. Ooh. We do How much? A... The boat was... Oh. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's closer to our... The swamp, actually. That merchant. So it is. I feel like this is a. There. I feel like this is a cozy stopping point. Yeah, let's rest before we do anything. Just yeah, so let's 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 roll over to the next day here. Dawn of a new day. I hear something going on. I feel like that keeps happening where we're about to go to bed and like some shenanigans is just outside the window. I got a good morning prompt, and you didn't? What is that? <laughs> what is that about? Good morning. Uh, shall we close this one out, Tim? Sure. Oh. I'm just going to do a quick Where's... check. Are oh, you just going to make sure nothing got destroyed here? Yeah, I heard, heard something out this way. Seems fine. Yeah, we got all this open space to put a wall and a moat. Yeah, like if you were to hypothetically, I wish I could like John Madden give you the X's <laughs> and O's on your screen, but like there's, all there's right, a fair amount of real estate. <laughs> right. I, almost, I almost just pointed at my monitor as if you'd be able to see. Like, but you've got like so much so much space where that you would not be intruding on anything that's currently already here. You know what I mean? Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, I, we're, we're using our poly bridge tactics. It does help. <laughs> I mean, I could just use that to plot out things. Plot out the path for it. It would be nice if I could just draw on it too. You can see that's the a good... tree line. I feel like that's a good stopping that. point here. Friends, if you are watching this on YouTube, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and join us on Twitch one of these days where we play a variety of games just like this one. And if you did join us on Twitch, we hope you all have an excellent evening and we hope you join us for our next stream where we have scheduled uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball or something similar. Bye, friends. Bye, 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 bye. Enjoy your gaming. Enjoy your gaming. Enjoy your gaming. <laughs>